All right, hi, my name is Josh. Uh, this is Richard. We're from Microsoft. Um, you can see our Twitter handles right there. Um, I just created mine yesterday, so I have like four tweets and three followers, so set your expectations accordingly. Um, so we partner up in a SRE engagement. Richard handles the development side, and I handle the program management side of that uh, relationship. It's with the Azure IoT team. Uh, we've been doing it for about a year. Um, it's, so SRE at, at Azure, we have the, the model where we have a centralized SRE organization, and then we build relationships uh, with the various services. Um, our, our engagement is the deepest engagement. Uh, each of these engagements have different flavors, and ours is definitely the deepest and most embedded. Uh, we have a ton of lessons that we've learned over the past year that we want to share with you today. Um, and so hopefully you can learn from us and you know, understand that you don't want to touch the hot stove. So, um, so we have four stories that we're going to share. These stories are mostly true. Uh, we may have rounded up a bit and removed some details to make them a little bit more entertaining. But the, uh, the lessons are 100% legit. They were definitely learned. We have the scars to prove it if you want to see them after the talk. Uh, each story has four components to it. The first one is the dream. So what did we naively believe was going to happen as we started this potential engagement? Then we go into the reality. So what actually happened? So mostly the stories talk about how a boulder came and smashed our dreams into a million pieces. Um, that's quickly followed by the lesson. So what did we learn from that, those situations? You know, sometimes what we learned is that Richard and I needed to change our approach, and really that was what we had to do every single time um, was change our approach. Uh, and then lastly, the application. So once we learned these lessons, did we just admire the problem moving forward, or did we find uh, things that we needed to do moving forward to make the uh, uh, success in the future as opposed to reliving the same mistakes over and over again? So uh, we've had an absolute blast over the past year doing this, and we hope that you enjoy our, our talk um, and some of the lessons we're going we're to share with you today. So with that, I will kick it off to Richard. Thanks, Josh. So as Josh mentioned, uh, about a year ago, we uh, identified an opportunity to um, engage with a new Azure service that was just coming out of a public preview, uh, just about to go to its, its GA release. And they were having a few operational challenges, so it set us up in a place where we thought we could come in. They were having some issues with low availability, deployment. Uh, they had a lot of monitoring noise. So really common stories that you might hear at the beginning of an engagement. And um, so great. Hey, we know how to do this stuff. All of us have run big services. We've run at scale. We've run things way bigger than this service. Uh, we know what it should look like. Uh, we uh, have a pretty good picture of the monitoring that we want to put in place and what that should look like, uh, et cetera. And we know how to get there. Most importantly, from my point of view, we built this really handcrafted team of experts who was going to come in and were just eager to dive in and, and uh, fix everything. And then uh, reality, we showed up and uh, you can imagine how, how that went over. Um, and actually, their, their reaction wasn't that negative. It was just more along the lines of, hey, this is really cool. We're excited you're here. The future sounds awesome, but we really need your help today. What can you do for us right here, right now? Um, because really what we need is just enough space uh, out of our operational burden to breathe. And uh, how can you help us go forward there? So, uh, wow, didn't really expect that reaction. Um, but so what really happened here? Um, and really, we, we broke it down to a couple things when we, we post more in this first piece was we showed up with some answers. Like we do actually know how to do stuff. We understand the systems that are in place. Um, but we had a bunch of assumptions, lots of things that we thought we knew. Uh, and we certainly did not have all the information uh, about this team and the where they at. Um, the service is in production, right? So clearly something must have gone right at, you know, at some point they, uh, they got some things shipped. I mean, we just didn't understand all the trade-offs that they had made to get to this point, all those little hows and whys of each of those decisions that they tracked through over time. They were crazy, right? We don't want to come in and say, hey, you're, uh, you're nuts. Uh, they just had to get things done, and this wasn't the top of their list. Um, and second, we really hadn't spent that much time observing what was their day-to-day -day life like? Like, what was it that we could actually be making an impact on? 
And finally, in, in reality, probably the most important thing that we learned here was uh, they didn't trust us. And that's fair. How could they? Um, SRE is not in the lexicon of Azure or Microsoft. It's not, a, it's not a normal thing. We're bringing in an outside entity and, you know, hold up the Google book and say, this is what we're trying to do, but that's, you know, how do we bring that in and how do we put it together? Um, how do we make sure that we're representing ourselves to drive their success, those sort of things that? Uh, and finally, we needed to talk about the relationship more as a, as a question of we. What do we do together? How are we better together? Um, rather than us talking about us and them. Um, and, you know, so right out of the gate, we'd come out and said, ah, well, we're more interested in finding and pointing out flaws uh, than we are in uh, working with you to, to fix some of the things that we've observed. So, awesome. It's all about trust. So let's focus on that. What can we do? How do we build up some trust with this partner on the completely outside? Um, so one thing we learned, one thing we did was uh, we took on something painful. We jumped into their on-call rotation um, with uh, about half of the on-call rotation being run by people from my team. Um, and, uh, but, but the lesson we learned was just get involved with something that's painful, right? Something that's actually eating their operational toil over time. Um, other teams that we've applied this lesson to, we picked up some of their deployment, some of their other servicing models, uh, reporting and data infrastructure, things like that. Um, but something that's important and something that's painful is a great way to uh, build this culture of us and we together. Um, second thing that we learned from this is just go deliver something. Get something done. Prove that you can actually take something over. Uh, and, and execute on that. And so in our case, we were able to take their uh, system review meeting. So it's a weekly review of uh, incidents and service health and other things that are going on with the service. We took a, a burden away from them. Um, this was a completely manual run meeting. We put a lot of automation in place. We were able to bring in a lot of experience from other parts of the organization and improve that meeting and took that burden away. Uh, we built a few small tools, a couple things that let customers uh, do some self-diagnosis and network service connectivity problems, but it demonstrated that we understood the customer point of view and how the customers were interacting with their service. And then um, Josh came on board with us and started attending our planning meetings. This was a huge benefit to us. It gave us this really clear picture of where they were going, what are they doing next, what's on the horizon that's coming that may impact reliability over time. Um, we started to show up and participate a lot more, going to daily stand-ups, uh, we'd go out to lunch with them. Um, we were able to dive in, do some uh, root cause analysis investigation on some, some of their more nasty issues and dive in and really start to understand the system from that point of view. Uh, we even were able to fix some core service engineering bugs um, as, as just a way of building our understanding and their trust. Um, finding out what their business is about. You know, reflecting on the customer as a point of view, or reflecting on the partner as a point of view of what is it you're in business to do? Who are your customers and why do they care? What are the, what are the things that impact them? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then finally, uh, digging out the, the, that story of those choices, the things that we didn't know, being curious about those and diving through them. We're going to tell you a story in a few minutes about how that came back and bit us really badly. Um, and then finally, we, uh, we kept building on those site, uh, initial successes and just sort of became part of their week-to-week -week engineering cycle. So we became normal. And Josh is going to tell you what, uh, how we moved on. All right, so now we're going to move into story number two. Um, we were asked to take over half of their on-call rotation. We had done on-call before. We've had success before. So we knew we were going to be successful, right? I mean, years of experience. How could this be any different than what we had done in the past? So we took eight developers and we threw them into the snake pit of on-call, said, go be successful. And Richard and I sat back and we were waiting for the glory to be, you know, <laughs> drain upon us as these early wins took place. And the reality was completely different than our dream. Uh, we had no idea how this service was supported. Uh, alerts would came, come in and we had no idea how to run them to ground. Um, there was incomplete and incorrect documentation, imagine that. We, everything was tribal knowledge based, right? And so we didn't know to turn left, right, go straight, or just bail and do a U-turn. Um, it was all in somebody else's head. Uh, we were really lost without any type of map. Um, at that point, we were nothing more than a human interaction between the problem 
and then the person who could diagnose and solve the problem, right? And so that's just an efficient process. Uh, we weren't value add, we were what we de deemed to be value withdrawal. So what was the lesson there? So um, we were degrading the trust in our relationship with this team at this point. Uh, we were more of a burden than anything else. Um, so what we learned is, you know, on-call success on one team doesn't equate to success on another team, especially a new team. This is a new team who's really been focused on building out their, their, their futures, right? So not a lot of focus on the care and feeding of how they're going to support what's already been rolled out. So it's really in, uh, in the early stages of maturity from that standpoint. Uh, and all teams are different, right? From standards, tools, uh, the processes that they use for builds, releases, trouble management when that comes in. Uh, and the internal procedures for absolutely everything are different team by team, right? Uh, and then just figuring out what is signal and what's noise in their daily lives and, the, and with the alerting. So what did we do with those lessons? Three things. One, we invest a lot more time in shadowing now when we're taking on something new. Uh, really look over their shoulder, sit with them, learn and understand their tools and processes and systems and the inner working of that service. Uh, and number two, we worked with this team to actually increase awareness of basic support structure uh, and the care and feeding of that, you know, things like troubleshooting guides and whatnot, documentation of all of the things. Um, and then the third one that's been really helpful is at the end of an on-call rotation, we pull everybody together and we do lessons learned, so cross-pollination across the team. So we don't repeat the same mistake twice, and we can learn those lessons and really build our maturity up. Uh, and, and currently, so this, the, the good news story in this is we're now supporting them with really minimal action with interaction with this team. We're self-sufficient, supporting half of their on-call. And in addition, we have a roadmap for the next service that we want to go into and help with on-call. We have that roadmap that we've built that we can just uh, plug into there. Now we'll roll into story three. All right. Thank you. It's quite a setup. Um, so uh, we, now we're uh, operating on call with our partner and we identified um, one of the major causes of incidents and outages was uh, during deployment time. And uh, so on average, uh, most of the time, every deployment would break something. Uh, sometimes it was just set off a lot of very noisy alarms and it would cause the uh, on call or DRI person to have to spend a lot of time closing out uh, noise incidents. But usually, typically, there was some level of customer impact. Not necessarily huge, but there was something that was impacted. And hey, we, we know the deployment system. We've used it before. We, we can fix this. Um, and we know everything. We have a great solution. And we know how to take all your pain away. And our reality, nobody wants to talk about that. And so we went back and we did a, a, uh, an evaluation of what had gone wrong um, in, this, uh, in, this in this part of our communication. And what we discovered was they had already been down this road. Um, much earlier in the development cycle, they had evaluated the common deployment infrastructure and found there were a couple missing features um, that made it so it wouldn't work for their specific case. And no one had ever followed up on that. Um, second, it wasn't what they perceived to be the biggest problem. Um, so even though we measured carefully, we observed, we researched this out as being the biggest problem, there were some things we didn't know. Um, we knew they had this homegrown deployment system, but again, we ran into this issue where we just didn't respect the journey that they'd been on to arrive right here where they were today. You know, all the choices and different trade-offs that they had made over time to arrive at, at the system that they had. Um, and really just, you know, the lesson for us was uh, we missed being curious and listening. Um, which painted a really incomplete picture of the situation that this team was in. And when we were doing our planning, we just didn't include them as a partner. We just assumed, again, that we knew, knew what to do. Um, so um, what was the outcome? What were the things that we took away from this? Well, the main thing uh, for my team is uh, developing a culture and behaviors of being curious, asking a question, um, having the discussions that lead to outcomes that are better than assertions rather than assuming that we know all the answers back and forth, um, asking. Um, 
And what we discovered was just by asking, we were often were taken on this interesting long history of the decisions and choices that were made to arrive where we were, and we could evaluate the system from a historical point of view um, rather than um, what we viewed as being the great and glorious future. Uh, collaboration, right? We wanted to work together. Um, you know, being, being together is always a better way to do it. And so even if we really feel we, know, we really know how to fix something, um, the partnership just leads and ends to better and more durable solutions to the problem. And finally, using data and measurement to quantify the problem rather than relying on perception. It allows us to step back from that emotional response. Um, Perception is important, and we definitely needed to listen to the partner so we can hear everything that they're saying. Um, but when we use the data and the measurement, we actually uncovered different avenues that no one had observed before, the actual, the thing that was broken and what it was impacting in real time. Um, so that was the, the main outcomes of, of our uh, adventures with deployment. Josh? Okay, the last of our four stories. <laughs> so over time we built a solid relationship with the team, right? It looked a lot like this house. It was stable and cute and right-sized and comfortable and things were just going well. We were like in a happy place, right? We were really a part of their team. We were part of their planning sessions and retrospectives. We were, we were working out of a joint backlog that we would mine for all the real SRE gritty stuff and we would go and do those things. Um, we were driving SRE principles deeper and deeper into their lexicon and the way that they thought about things. So we saw a lot of improvements there. Uh, we were doing joint morale events, holiday parties. We would, our families would go on vacation together. I mean, it was just a really great relationship that we had built. However, we missed the mark. This is the up house, by the way, in Seattle. So if you know the story, it's a pretty good little story. We thought we were building a comfortable house on the corner. And their thought was, no, you're building a multi-story, multi-tenant commercial facility. We thought we were uh, going to SRE one aspect of their service, and they thought we were going to aspect all, or SRE all the aspects of their service, right? We were going to SRE a thing, and they wanted us to SRE all of the things. Um, so we were so focused on one part of their service that we failed to see the grander opportunity that existed. Uh, we also, we didn't have the resources to support beyond the support that we were doing, right? So you're in a, we were in a bit of a position there. So what's the lesson? First, set clear expectations up front. What does this engagement look like? What is going to be supported? How long is it going to be supported? Is there an exit plan? Number two, lift your head up and look for other opportunities. Right? We were so heads down focused on the tactical of the engagement that sometimes we miss the more strategic view of the engagement. Are there unmet needs that SRE can lean into and help? Number three, find patterns. Right? You can't scale this with people. And so, are you building tech that can be rolled out across other teams or other parts of the services? Are there best practices that you're developing that can be rolled out to other areas of the service? So what did we do with this? Two things, one, when we adjusted our approach, like I talked about, we're looking for those patterns. How can we spread those solutions across multiple teams? Things like lessons from our on-call experience. What can we do best practices for other teams for on-call? Uh, are there standards that we've picked up that we can roll out elsewhere? Is there automation tech that we can roll out for other teams? And number two, which I think is pretty critical, and that is making sure we're aligned on strategic vision. So we do a leadership sync with this team every quarter where all we talk about is how far out our headlights are. Right? We don't talk about the tactical day-to-day. -day. It's where are we going for the next three months, and that's what we focus on. Um, and so it's building a nice strategic alignment between the organization. All right, so Richard, I'll pass it off to you for the... <clears throat> so what do we take away? So after a year of working with this partner, what are the things that we changed and we did, um, or what we observed? And to me, uh, one of the most amazing things that can sort of came as a surprise was most of the things that are going to make these engagements work don't really have, um, aren't really the deep technical knowledge and experience things. It's the relationship things that make, that build this. So trust is everything. The partners we're going to work with uh, they need to trust they know that we know what we're doing. Um, they need to trust that 
Um, we're going to do what we say we're going to do. And they need to trust that we're working to their best interest, um, that the outcome is, is on their side, uh, that we don't, we're not representing our own internal agenda. Um, we need to be curious is the best tool to understand what's going on. Uh, what are the trade-offs and decisions that, that were made to get to this point so that we can start with a common language? Uh, measuring helps drive a conversation. What can we improve um, without, um, without relying exclusively on the perception of, of uh, behavior of a system? Um, so what do they think the biggest problem is? But then does the measurement support that assumption and that assertion? And then, as Josh mentioned, uh, really getting an understanding for what's coming up next. Um, how can we be prepared for the V next of the, the product, platform, or service? And what are the things that we learn from the current engagement um, that are patterns and solutions that we can push out and use in the next, and the next, and the next uh, for the, the final 70 of these that we, we have to go do? All right, so I'm, I'm going to close with this. So what is it that we're talking about here? You know, what's the big takeaway in all of this? And it really is, in order to be successful in business and SRE, um, a great growth mindset is, is critical, right? And, I mean, this isn't something that's really SRE-centric either. This is just the kind of life in general, right? So it's a good life uh, way to approach life. You know, to be a, be a learner and not a teller is, is important. We were in a lot of teller mode, right? And so now we are constant learner mode, which is critical. Um, having the right answer is important, but it's not as important as having the right question, right? Um, and listening to those answers. So I'll close on this quote from Satya Nadella. I'll actually read it as well. So if you take two people, one of them is a learn-it-all and the other is a know-it-all, the learn-it-all will always trump the know-it-all in the long run, even if they start with less innate capability. So thank you. We've enjoyed sharing our stories. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something from us, even if it's just something small. We'll take pride in that. So um, with that, I will open it up to any questions that you may have for us.